Abedina Corny here with a topic, what is financial abortion? This is a Negro Manosphere talking point, aka the Black Manosphere, right? A financial abortion, also referred to as a paper abortion, um, a statutory abort, if you will, gives a man the right to opt out of any emotional and or financial ties with a child they didn't consent to. And they can do this in the early stages of pregnancy. A man who carries the initials J.I. in the Black Manosphere claims to be the owner of this intellectual property, but this is not the case. He frequents panels in Black YouTube telling Black women their fathers never wanted them and that they're worthless accidents. Many among these men claim the ideas and inventions of others to add worth to themselves as they simultaneously seek to suck the worth out of others. The notion of financial abortion became a hotly debated topic circa 1998. Professor Francis K. Goldscheider is the creative mind credited with the idea. The Brown University professor posited that men should be able to choose if they want to be fathers and as much as women are able to choose via traditional abortion whether or not they wish to be mothers. The rights and responsibilities of fatherhood should be voluntary, not obligatory, according to this professor of sociology. Okay this Francis K. Goldscheider guy. The decision to opt out of all rights, responsibilities, and parental privileges of parenthood would be binding and irreversible. So legally, the the child's father, baby daddy, whatever you want to call it, would be legally reduced to a sperm, do- sperm donor. So like I said, the the decision to opt out is is legally binding and irreversible. So what I like about that part is that should the child become Elon Musk, Bill Gates, or Michelle Obama for crying out loud, the father would have utterly no right to claim this child, encroach upon, or otherwise leech off of the child come adulthood. Everything else about this I find upsetting to say the very least. Even the children of sperm donors go searching for their biological fathers. I personally know a woman who sold her eggs for thousands of dollars only to have a child created from one of those eggs hunt her down and request a relationship. By the way, the two have a very sister-like relationship. They're they're gorgeous, good people, and they're getting on grandly, okay? Here's the deal with creating orphans. And I know a lot of people, you know, they have this thing where you're not an orphan unless you are missing both parents. But um, I have an Eastern background, and for me, if you're missing one parent, you qualify as an orphan. And um, there is a gaping, unscalable, unscalable, unfillable hole in the hearts and minds of orphaned children. So why would we create them knowingly and willingly as a society? Huh? Why would you do that? Why would you purposely create people with aching hearts? Orphan children, like I said in Eastern religions, uh, such as Islam, are given a special status due to the heartache of not having parents. Not knowing who you are or where you come from is enough of a breeding ground for mental illness in and of itself. Adding on to that, seeing the documentation of a parent that never wanted you or intended to love you. This is enough to inspire suicidal ideation in the event that that child happens to be a highly sensitive person or empath. Vasectomies are free for those who cannot afford them thanks to Obamacare. Therefore, none of this can make any moral sense. Surgeons and scientists have already created ways for you to opt out of fatherhood. Again, it's called a vasectomy. It's not even a nip tuck. It's just a little nip stitch. You still got all your parts. You can still ejaculate like you just are going to be shooting blanks. Again, it's called a vasectomy. This way, no woman can ever hold a child you never wanted over your head, nor guilt you into some fatherhood that you never wanted to step into. Women have taken the brunt of reproductive responsibility since time immemorial. We have beaten and bruised our bodies with the ramifications of all manner of birth control methods to the point of infertility in some cases, death in others. Here, we have an option, vasectomies, for men to be as responsible for child reproduction. And they would still, in 2021, 
rather create fatherless children than to skip the opportunity to create that child altogether. What's more, get this. Vasectomies are reversible. <laughs> if you get a vasectomy for 10 years and you undo that bad boy, you're going to be able to have a child and a family and, and whatever else. Certain birth control methods, maybe I should get that to that later, but certain birth, birth control methods, uh-uh. What they do to you is irreversible. Some. For fatherless men in the Negro manosphere to promote the idea of creating more fatherless men is incredible. They complain about mother-led single-parent households begetting weak, effeminate males, a.k.a. themselves, yet seek legal permission legislation to contribute more of the same ladies of all nations colors creeds i challenge you with all my might to avoid these men even if a time comes upon them whereby they do want marriage and children there is an an, an irredeemable quality at work here with this whole financial abortion thing some doors people walk through morally, they only, have, they only have entrances. They don't have exits. There are some things that we can do, some actions we can commit that turn us out. And I posit that this is one of those things. Do not ever immortalize these men by giving them offspring. They literally do not deserve them. They literally want the right to financially abort that child. They literally want the right to be able to walk past a child that looks like them, walks like them, talks like them, is like them because they belong to them and say, you ain't got no daddy. I don't know you, little boy. You ain't my son. Like, this is beyond trifling. I can't think of a word, an English word to convey what how low this is i mean the bar is in hell the bar is <laughs> oh my you guys it's 2021 see in 1998 when this uh when these conversations were happening and this professor at brown university came up with this i mean 1998 who knew what a vasectomy was nobody right nobody still in the making here now we have the option to where you know you can skip this brother you don't have to be put into this kind of situation. You can just opt out. <laughs> and they would still rather argue about financial abortions. I've been in so many of these conversations where I say, what about a vasectomy? And everybody goes quiet. Or everybody acts like I didn't say anything about a vasectomy. Like, that's a solution. That's a solution. Why are you so... It's like they act like a vasectomy is like castration. And they're just going to lose. You know, they're going to become these eunuchs. And I'm like, that's not the case. I know a guy. I know a guy who is very promiscuous who had a vasectomy. He's got three daughters by three women. And the karma hit him. And he's like, oh, man, my daughters are going to someday meet a man like me. And I know they are because they love their daddy. And, you know, a girl's first love, the, the man in her life, like, like chances are, unless they go to some kind of therapy and, and undo that kind of thing, they're going to be looking for a man like their dad. And this is Mr. Pumpendum. This is Mr. I love you and, and I'll leave you. So he took it upon himself to do that little nip stitch. Again, it's not, it's not even a nip tuck. <laughs> okay. He took it upon himself to do that, and he now exclusively dates women who already have children because he's like, look, you can never ask me for kids. So, like, baby mamas are actually, you know, his thing because he's like, I'm, I'm never <laughs> getting this bad boy undone. And uh, just, hey, girl, you better have some kids already because this is not what I'm willing to give you. And those, it, it's crazy how, like, those relationships tend to work for him better than those of, you know, the woman he did it without children. Anyhow, 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 that's not the, that's not the topic. The fact that these people are so heartless, the fact that these people want to create orphans, the fact that they, like <sighs> missing a parent will really fracture your, your self-esteem and your self-image psychology. You will need to be in therapy from day one of, you know, f five years old, six years old. You will need to be immediately put into therapy.
It's a terrible thing that these men are promoting. <sighs> Especially when you have this option. Look, I'm I'm not going to be before you much longer. I just wanted to talk about this because I've seen a lot of argumentation about this and really there shouldn't be. There shouldn't be when vasectomies are free. There shouldn't be when like, I mean, if your insurance won't cover that vasectomy, you know, because you work out wherever else or you don't have a job like Obamacare will do it. I have checked. I know firsthand experience, just like a lot of birth control is covered when you've got that state insurance because they don't want your broke self reproducing. No way. Why do you even want the ability to get a woman pregnant if you don't plan on taking care of those kids? <sighs> you guys. I'm learning to, um, this is an older topic for me. Like I had this conversation, uh, last year on a panel and, um, there are certain channels that I say to stay away from just because it puts a lot of toxic energy into where I live, right? And today is February 12th. Um, this is actually the, the birth and death date of my own child. So um, as a mother bereaved, uh, and I did have my child in wedlock, I annulled the marriage. Um, I just couldn't imagine I, I I couldn't imagine this type of fatherhood like oh you guys I'm I'm rambling because I'm just this is really emotional obviously for me to talk about um some people they think that death is the worst possible thing. But I'm just like to live through some of the things that these men are willing to put innocent children through. Some of those things are worse. Some of those things are worse. There's a reason why some people commit suicide. That there's a reason. Because sometimes life is worth it. Dying is easy. It's living that's hard. And when there are men out here who are these potential fathers who will make children knowingly live through this kind of thing, it's just... Please avoid these men at all costs. Please understand that, yes, it is okay to deem certain human beings as worthless. People, oh, only God can judge me. No, forget that. I can judge you too. And you can't stop me from it. And for you to feel this way about children, yes, I'm going to deem you worthless. Children don't just deserve both parents. They deserve a whole village. They deserve their aunts. They deserve their uncles. They deserve their teachers. They deserve their village. It's hard enough. It's it's hard enough to be a parent. It's hard enough to be a parent in a two-parent household let alone with a missing part. And the African-American community suffers from this so much. And it's crazy because I see these men mocking these women for not having fathers, but it's just like, okay, joke's on you because you're super duper effeminate because you didn't have a father either. Like, like you know, now the thing uh, in black YouTube and in the Negro manosphere is to lie about having a dad, is, is to pretend that you had a dad because if you admittedly say that you, your dad wasn't in your life, it's like, oh, ho, ho, there's your problem. You fatherless, blah, 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 ha, 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 right? It's how they mock each other, but I'm just like, keep, keep it a buck. Like, yes, we have amazing African-American fathers out there, but tell the truth, like, are they in the minority or are they in the minority? They're a growing number, and it's an amazing thing. But I remember, you know, in the 80s and in the 90s, like, it, men would not be shamed for having nine kids by five women. They would not be shamed. And it was normal. It was normal in our community. That's embarrassing to admit, but it's true. And it's like now they're trying to renormalize it. Like, no, we've done so much absent father shaming that, yes, now people feel an obligation and that is a good thing. Don't worry about these women. Worry about the children. 
Worry, worry about the future. Solve the problem that, that gets on your nerves. Children need love. And they need to feel wanted. Even sometimes I can be watching social media and I watch a kid like mom, 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 mom. And the mom is just like, you know, trying to model the jeans or whatever. Like it really bothers me. It really bothers me because it tells the, you know, I, look, I graduated from three different universities. Okay. I professionally, I was a school teacher and I was a school teacher for about a decade. So when I tell you this, when I tell you this, it hits me in the heart. It hits me in the heart because you can tell the kids right away who are missing a parent in the home. And you can almost tell which gender they're missing. I know we want to love on our LGBTQ plus community and tell them that gender doesn't matter and is a social construction. But the reality is, no, there really is female and male genders. There really is feminine and masculine energy. There really are roles. There really are things that are biological and that are necessary for the development of a child the healthy development and self-esteem of a child. Yes, you can raise a kid with two dads and two moms, but it's something to have both a mother and your father in the same house. It it really is. And there are there aren't many substitutes for that. I mean, a substitute I can think of is maybe you have, you know, Nana and Daddy. Or grandpa and mommy, you know, maybe it's a daddy's girl who had, a, who had, you know, chosen a bad man. And now, you know, like you, you need that bloodline masculine and feminine in the household, or you're going to need therapy. I don't know what to tell you. And just because people don't tell you their problems, just because they don't tell you that they've got low self-esteem or they're insecure, or they've got a poor attachment, you know, love style or they're codependent or whatever just because people don't tell you that or you know it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist just because you've not gotten your diagnosis and what is you know up with you or wrong with you doesn't mean that it does not exist so many people avoid mental health screening and checks because they don't want to know that they've got PTSD they don't want to know that you know they're codependent they don't want to know you know that they've got some kind of a major depression depression going on and I'm like, your ignorance is even more harmful because now you're out here, you know, positing that as a, as a personality trait, the way that you are, when really, if you have some therapy and some healing, you might find yourself a, an easier person to be around. It is so much easy to raise healthy children than to repair broken adults. You got to tell these kids that they are loved and they are wanted and that they are appreciated. So many times, like most of the things that adults do in their life, you can find a reason for them in their childhood. Wouldn't it be so much better to just eliminate that reason? Oh, why are you on a stripper pole? Oh, my daddy never loved me. Whatever. This is the only relationship I've ever known with men. (laughs) You know? Oh, why do you beat women and prostitute women? Oh, you know, my mom always neglected me for men and blah, blah, blah. And I just learned that this is the nature of women and they're just bad creatures who deserve it. I mean, (laughs) the psychology of what a financial abortion can do to a person. Huh? Hi, baby. Welcome to the planet. Your daddy never wanted you, but I do. Everything's okay now, right? Wrong. Wrong. I mean, I could look at my first graders, my second graders, and I've taught everything from, you know, preschool to, I mean, university level English instructor, right? I was, uh, I worked at a few universities in Saudi Arabia teaching English as a foreign language. And I mean, you can tell who doesn't have a dad. You can tell. And you can tell who does. You can almost look at a kid's handwriting and tell what's going on in their house. You can look at how they dress and how they come to school and and see how their parents feel about them. You can see how they interact with other kids and who they hate and who they're jealous of and who makes them happy and why. Oh, God. Like, Like, it's a thing. And educators know this so well. Because the reality is, 
educators spend more time with your children than you do. And what I mean by that is if you send your kid off to school, the waking hours of a child are spent mostly at school during the week, right? So even though your kid is going home to you, maybe they're going to football practice or band practice and then they're having dinner and going to bed and they're sleeping for, you know, eight hours or something. There's only 24 hours in a day. So we just knocked out 16 with with sleep and with going to school. They're in school for eight hours, they're asleep for eight hours and they've got some stuff in between to make up the 24, right? So like we are highly impactful in their lives and we sometimes see things about them that parents, you know, may or may not catch. We see them behaving with their friends in ways that they would never behave at home. And you cannot tell me that these financial abortions are going to be any form of benefit to the society. Making it legal to have kids you don't want. Without responsibility, without anybody being being able to shake a fist at you. Just have a vasectomy. I mean, we get so sensitive when people insult and look down upon the, the African American community. But look at what we allow. We get so offensive when people see us and they stereotype us right away. But look at the stuff we allow. They can't tell the difference between us and them, you know? <laughs> we have all kind of jokes about smart Asians because, I mean, what, what they refuse to allow. I mean, you go to certain Asian countries, the kid could be 18 years old and still get the, get swatted and, 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 and disciplined physically, corporally by a teacher. It's not a mom, dad, an uncle, an aunt, a grandpa. It's a teacher because the, the value that is placed on education. And this is just an example, but I'm saying like the stereotypes come from somewhere. All right. They, they come from somewhere. And do African-Americans have it harder than everybody else? I mean, arguably, yes. But still, look at the kind of stuff we allow. (sighs) These conversations about financial abortion when vasectomies exist, it's a stain on us. It's a stain and a shame. These are things to be taken seriously. I have come to realize that a lot of people who need therapy are just on YouTube you know, spouting hatred because it's cathartic and because it helps them out. I have seen different men who were hailing from this Negro manosphere and being, you know, part of this We Hate Women Club only to get happily married and finally heal those wounds and and carry on. And it's like, well, now you left all this, you know, immortal rhetoric out here of, you know, pump and dump and whatever else. Meanwhile, you're happily married expecting a child. Like, dude... (laughs) <laughs> what did Tony Tony Braxton say? Unbreak my heart? Like, un- undo this stuff, man. So they'll hurt everybody in their path because they're still hurting. But once they get it all out, they're like, oh, okay, I'm ready. Uh, and on some India Ari, I'm ready for love. <laughs> and it's like, it doesn't work like that. Go get therapy. Go say these things to your computer screen with a paid therapist on the other line. Stop teaching people that this is life. That financial abortions is life. That that these types of decision making is is okay. It's not. Shaming isn't always a bad thing. It really is not. Shaming and shunning certain behaviors is it's not always a bad thing. Especially when it comes to the moral and psychological psychological development of children. Like, that is where you should draw the freaking line. It's one thing for adults to abuse one another, but to harm a child. On purpose. Knowingly. That's a lot. That's a lot. I think a lot of what African Americans go through as a people, where we figure, we're like, man, why can't we catch a break? Why is this not happening to us? Well, how do you treat the children? God defends children and fools. When a child doesn't have a protector, God himself stands in as that child's protector. 
some of these deadbeat dads, you know, you find them homeless and tense, even though they've got a bunch of kids. And it's just like, you know, life has driven them crazy. Angels and spirits and whatever else have turned them crazy because it's their punishment. It's their punishment for what they did to their children. And of course, this goes both ways, but we're not talking about that right now. A bad mom and a bad dad are equal to me. You could throw them both away. But this financial abortion is something that is obviously specifically male. Anybody who tries to propagate such a thought should be shunned, shunned from the African American community. If if whoever Professor Francis K. Goldscheider is in his community, Brown University, and and hey, and there's no brown people in the conversation, okay, fine. You you talk about that, but African Americans, we don't have a culture that can afford this. We can't afford it. We already have children that burst open the foster care system at the seams. He got so many black pa- black people who get mad when they see, you know, two gay white males with, with, with a family full of black kids. And I'm like, it's our fault, though. You're not licensed to be a foster care parent. And you're, you're orphaning these kids. You're having kids you don't want, throwing them away. CPS gets called on you. You're not fighting for them. Like, 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 dude. At least they have somebody to step in in the gap and say, hey, I'm not perfect, but I'm willing to love you. This is our problem. This is our problem. We spend so much time in this gender war and zero time wondering about how we affect children. This conversation about financial abortion should not have been limited to you, baby mama and baby daddy. The number one concern here should have been children. That was a failure in and of itself. That was a failure in and of itself. How will children develop under these circumstances? That should have been the main point of the conversation. I mean, if you don't care about children, I, I it, it's my belief Look, it's my belief. I cannot confirm it. But if you don't care about children, I believe God doesn't care about you. (laughs) So with this plight of, you know, because not all things, look, I'm getting esoteric, okay? (sighs) I'm, I'm going down a spiritual path here, and this is not what this video is supposed to be about. Uh, and it's already too long. I, I did not mean to make a half hour video. Anyhow, this is financial abortion. And if you hear anybody talk about this, throw them in the rubbish bin. They are, they are waste meant for a waste basket. Isolate them, shame them, and do not deal with them. This is not how you te- treat children. This is not how you treat children. I'm about to unicorn in a mouth.